tonight at 10. America pays tribute to its fallen heroes. May God bless each of you as you remember and may God bless those who have given the ultimate measure of sacrifice. People from various communities gathering at Capitol Hill to honor Utahns who not only lost their lives, but gave it willingly in service of our country. Plus, our country needed us. Everybody during World War II was chipped in to do everything that we could. It is especially fitting that we tell the story of a largely unknown group of women heroes from World War II. And today's Worth Watching will give you Nell Stevenson's bright story. Kind of look in the mirror before we leave that morning and, and say, look, I'm going to drive calm. I'm going to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Memorial Day marks the beginning of Utah's 100 deadliest days, a time period that runs through Labor Day. We'll explore the cause behind these avoidable accidents. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. And welcome to the ABC4 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us on this Memorial Day. Glenn Mills has the day off. Uh, today, Americans paying their respects across the country to the fallen heroes who paid the ultimate sacrifice. The 23rd Army Band gathered Utah leaders, veterans, and U Utah citizens to Capitol Hill in honor and remembrance of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, set on the south stairs of the Capitol building. A collection of flags, flowers, and ribbons surrounded the area. Governor Cox addressing the gathering today, saying that our country needs brave men and women defending our home. We also ought to remember those who have have already given so much. To protect that sacred idea that we are endowed by our creator with unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and so today, today we pay tribute to those men and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to protect and promote that radical idea. Relatives, partners, and friends of those who gave all for our nation pause to appreciate their sacrifice. And this month marks the anniversary of the end of World War II in Europe. It is especially fitting on this Memorial Day that we tell the story of a largely unknown group of heroes from that war. They were the women pilots who flew all kinds of warplanes day and night for a total of 60 million miles. Now, one of the last 11 of these heroes lives right here in Salt Lake City, and she's about to celebrate her 102nd, 102nd birthday. Craig Worth is honored to tell us the story of Nell Stevenson Bright. Throughout the world, throngs of people hail the end of the war in Europe. Now the war against Germany is won. 78 years ago, Utahns woke up to banner headlines. Later, President Truman addressed the nation on radio. This is a solemn but glorious hour. Well, the war was millions of stories of heroes, and one of those stories was nearly forgotten. It's about the women pilots of World War II. They were the wasps. They trained like all other World War II pilots, except they had to buy their own uniforms and they received no benefits, even if they were one of the 38 women who died in planes while serving their country. They flew thousands of planes from base to base or in training exercises. They flew wherever they were needed and on whatever plane they were given, in all weather, often with only goggles, a compass, and a radio. Day and night, as men were needed for overseas and combat duty, only a few are still with us to tell their story. One of those women pilots is Nell Stevenson Bright, a hero among us in Salt Lake City. Our country needed us. Everybody during World War II was chipped in to do everything that we could. They were an elite crew of a thousand exceptional pilots. Yet even in this official Army Air Corps film, they were subjected to humiliation and sexism. But even before they get a chance to take the polish off their nails, it's out onto a dusty Texas drill field with them. Right away, the Air Force wants to get a little muscle on those pretty arms. Nell Stevenson Bright told us by phone, only the best got their wings to serve under legendary aviator Jacqueline Cochran, 
We were putting on lipstick at the orders of Jacqueline Cochran. She wanted us to look very nice, ladylike, when we got off the airplane. And in a world unknown to most, they flew and they flew. Some ferried planes from the factories to bases. Here in the West, they flew thousands, yes, thousands of planes from the coast to Great Falls, Montana. There, they had the Russian Army stars put on the planes to then go to Siberia and fight Germany on the Russian front. Nell Stevenson Bright was sent to Texas to train troops in anti-aircraft fire. She would tow the target or a drone for live fire. It was dangerous. Not all would survive. It was something very different, and we were the first women to fly military airplanes, so we were an experiment. Then suddenly in 1944, they were no longer needed. So we were just uh, deactivated then, and uh, were sent home. Our records were sealed for 30 years. Congress voted down giving them benefits, or further service, or official recognition. I guess we were the best kept secret of World War II. <laughs> Nell Stevenson Bright would move on to be a Phoenix stockbroker for 50 years before moving to Utah. Finally decided to retire when I was 85. And now Nell Stevenson Bright will be 102 on June 20th. Well, in 1977, the Air Force announced that women could fly military planes for the very first time. Nell Stevenson Bright said, oh no, we used to do that. Congress unsealed the records and all those women got the congressional gold medals they deserved. Craig Worth, ABC 4 News. Thank you, Craig Worth, for sharing the story, incredible. Honoring our troops doesn't end just by our coverage tonight. Starting at 5.30 a.m. on Good Morning Utah, our Jillian Smuckler will be joining Utah veterans on the Utah Honor Flight. You're seeing footage from the trip last year. Now, she'll be flying to our nation's capital to join our state's veterans and seeing the monuments honoring their service. So we'll bring you their full journey again starting at 5.30 a.m. tomorrow morning at the Provo Airport, and we'll take you all the way through their journey until they return home Wednesday night. Okay, did you not learn so much from Craig Worth's piece, Nate? That was, uh, that was epic. I don't yes. think I've seen, uh, well, as good of a story as that one. And I had no idea that they had the, the wasps. And happy birthday to her, right? Yes, 102. Thank you, Nell. Boy, that's yes. a milestone. That's a lot longer than I want to live, I think. So good for her. <laughs> <laughs> she made it a long time. Uh, hey, let's kind of look outside, uh, show you what the conditions are. We're looking at the Colonial Flag shot. This is here at the studio. Uh, it's at half mast today for uh, Memorial Day. We have had some active weather uh, for a short period of time this afternoon. Otherwise, it was a very nice day with lots of sunshine, and we ended up seeing a stray thunderstorm roll through some of the Wasatch Front. Almanac showing temperatures today. Yeah, we hit 83 degrees. Our low was 60, so 78 our average high. Above normal temperatures, thanks to southerly flow that's been in place, 54 for the low. Record high, 99. We did have four hundredths of an inch of moisture that we managed to squeeze out. Sunset tonight was 851. We're approaching summer solstice which means we're having some of the longest days of the year, uh, most amount of daylight at least. It's going to start to uh, lose some of those as we get towards the uh, summer solstice around June 20th. Satellite and radar show we do have southerly flow in place this evening. There are a few showers still lingering, mainly across the Utah and Idaho state line. A little bit of active weather in portions of Duchesne County over the Uinta, seeing some showers and storms there and thunderstorms over Rock Springs. Anticipating fairly quiet conditions tonight, though. Even tomorrow, we'll kind of copy and paste the forecast from what we saw today light chance of a storm, otherwise mainly sunny skies, upper 80s in St. George and about 85 in Salt Lake City. Things do change later in the week. We'll break down all those details coming up with the full forecast in just a few. Emily. All right, Nate, thank you. Memorial Day weekend is often the unofficial start to summer for many. And Utah Highway Patrol alongside UDOT have started their 100 deadliest days campaign in hopes of reducing fatalities on all of our roadways. ABC 4's Elena Castro joining us live from Salt Lake City with more on that, Elena. Emily, people often say that Utah has the worst drivers, but could there be some truth to that statement? 
Utah's 100 deadliest days runs from Memorial Day to Labor Day, with those days being the highest for deaths due to poor driving. Officials saying these deaths are completely avoidable and that road aggression is playing a dangerous role. We're seeing a huge increase in aggressive driving, people that are tailgating, people that are speeding and, um, you know, cutting other people off, improper lane change. That's where we're seeing a, a big uptick in, in traffic fatalities. Aggressive drivers aren't the only ones at fault. UDOT saying that summer carelessness is also to blame. This is the time of year that more and more people are out on the road and, and you know, you're not contending with, with winter weather conditions and, and usually it's, uh, you know, the sun's out, smooth sailing and a lot of people become complacent. And so we're asking people to focus all of their attention on the road. 2022 saw 116 fatalities from January to May. This year, that number is down to 90. Utah Highway Patrol Lieutenant Jelaine Hawks credits additional road safety education for the reduction of fatalities so far in 2023. It comes from effort on our part to be out on the road, reminding people, educating people, but it also is means that you at home can play a part in that as well. Officials say there's no need to complicate driving. Watch out for pedestrians and wear your seatbelt because one fatality is one too many. Reporting live from Salt Lake City, Elena Castro, ABC4 News. All right, we thank you, Elena. Well, since 2019, the Utah Highway Patrol has stopped more than 26,000 drivers going faster than 100 miles per hour on Utah roadways. In 2022, a legislation was passed to charge anyone driving over 105 miles per hour with reckless driving. Now, according to the National Road Safety Foundation, the period between Memorial Day and Labor Day saw an average of 2,100 teen drivers involved in fatal crashes nationwide. The Department of Transportation reported that U.S. traffic deaths reached a 16-year high in 2021. At least 42,915 people died in car crashes that year. All right, a boil water order has been lifted in Camas after final test results showed no signs of contamination finally. That order was in place since Saturday after a harmful bacteria E. coli was detected in the water. E. coli is a bacteria that presents itself in the water and it indicates that it is contaminated with human or animal waste. Though final test results are clear, officials are still asking residents to take precautions like run your water faucet taps for at least five minutes before use. They're also advising residents to wipe the ice bin with a disinfectant and replace all water filters before use. And who's got the top K-9? Well, there's a special grant in place to answer this question. Aftermath Services, a trauma cleaning and biohazard removal company, is giving out $15,000 in grants to police departments with the best K-9 unit. It's an interstate competition, and our K-9 units are up against those in Arizona, Colorado, and Nevada. Police departments from North Salt Lake, West Bountiful, Woods Cross, Springville and Nephi City are all participating in the competition. So make sure your vote you, for your favorite canine unit. The link you'll see there at the bottom of your screen. I'm confident that we'll get a vote in both houses and we'll see. Lawmakers in Washington now face one week to pass the debt ceiling bill in both chambers of Con Congress. President Joe Biden seems confident. All right, plus we're tracking some changes to the weather. We've got an area of low pressure eventually bringing moisture back into the state. Time out possible thunder showers for your week uh, as we head into the new work week. Details coming up after the break.